Um, but this is something that, um, and I will try not to talk too no, long. Because so okay, because okay, I, I, I can talk underwater. Um, and this is something that I am actually quite quite passionate about because being sort of on that line of Gen X and um, a millennial, I have volunteered and managed volunteers who are millennials, um, and I think it's sort of a bit of an underrated generation. Um, so just to give you a bit of a background on myself, um, who am I and what do I know about volunteering, because um, I will be talking sort of across my experience and not just specifically anecdotally about um, Orange Sky Laundry. Um, so the chick in the hot white romper is me and the woman rocking the afro is my mother um, and the reason why this is important is because um, I grew up with baby boomer parents and volunteering was a fundamental part of who they were as people and I we will come back to why this is so important in the millennial generation um, what I really wanted was a picture of myself six years old folding envelopes um, in the back of an office. My mother said the photo doesn't exist because someone taught me the term socially acceptable child labor. Um, but this, this was such a part of who I was as a child because um, I was a charity brat. And um, it has underpinned my entire life that volunteering, uh, it's just something that you do. Um, I have been a volunteer all through my young life. For the last 10 years, I have been working as a fundraising manager. And then I came back into the world as a publicist and a writer uh, and joined Orange Sky Laundry actually as a volunteer. And I've been able to look back full circle as things that I did right and things I did wrong actually as an employee managing volunteers. And it has been really good for me to learn about how we can actually move forward with a very millennially, millennial driven organization like Orange Sky Laundry. Um, so I have worked with the volunteers of the past and the near present, um, and I'd like everyone just to have a bit of an image in their mind of who the volunteers of the past are. Is this the image that you're thinking of? <laughs> Ladies folding envelopes, um, and that was a great story about millennials not knowing how to fold envelopes. Um, but what I am going to talk about is how millennials are fundamentally different in the way in which they volunteer but actually aren't that different um, from our volunteers of the past. Um, so who are the volunteers of the future? Um, this is the image that a lot of people come to mind about millennials. Um, there's some great teamwork going on here. And while we joke, um, we were talking about ageism. I think that millennials are of a generation that really get disregarded by the community as being lazy, self-serving, uh, materialistic and egotistical, uh, but the millennial volunteers that I've worked with, um, they're these people. They're superheroes to me. Because if you do have millennials that volunteer within your organization, I can paint a picture of who they are pretty easily. Uh, they work maybe two jobs, they're studying, they're saving for a mortgage that is significantly bigger than the mortgage that we all saved for. Uh, they probably have a dog, they probably have a great social media profile, they've got great eyebrows, they go to the gym, they are part of social clubs, they go out every Friday night, and they also volunteer for your organization. It may not be the life that we chose, but it is. they are a reflection of the time, and that's why as an entire industry we kind of need to shift forward and let them lead us into who we need to be in the future as, as actual organizations. So the most important thing with millennials and really with any volunteers is that we need to value their time because time is just as important as money. And this is something that I have made critically, critical error as a fundraising professional is that I considered my donors to be more important than my volunteers because they were the people that were paying the bills and allowing me to provide the services. And that is a huge mistake that we, we have all made in charity and that we need to remind we need to remember that volunteers and the millennials when they've got those cram packed lives that their time is really important which is why we need to remember that they have lives and commitments and from the get go when you bring a volunteer in through the threshold you need to make it incredibly clear to them what you expect from them for a commitment don't tell them that they need to give you four hours of Fortnite and then send them emails about barbecues and training sessions and powwows and all these other things that you want them to be involved with because then when you actually really need them to fill in another shift, they're gonna have burnt out. And that's why you need to have set tasks and goals for them. If you're just moving into a space where you're going to be bringing in volunteers as part of your workforce, 
Know what it is that you're actually going to have them do before you have them sitting in your office or out on the ground. Um, that sounds really silly, but I have done it and I have been in those situations where we want to get volunteers and then we have no idea what we're going to do with them eight hours a day. And that's also why you don't keep a volunteer, especially a millennial volunteer around, if you don't have enough to fill their day. It happens. They work really quickly. They've got the jobs that you laid out for them that you thought was going to take them all week. They get it done in two hours. Send them home. It's a really simple principle. But just by rewarding them that way and saying, look, I don't think we can fill a day for you. Come on home or go on home and come back next week and we'll have more for you to do. <coughs> the other thing is that you need to create an environment where it's okay for them to say no. Um, and I need to be clear that there's a line here. Um, if you've got a volunteer that says, I just, I need to step out for a couple of weeks, I've got to regroup, I've got some things that I need to do, and I'll come back to you at the end of this month, it's not the same thing as sending you a text message half an hour into the shift that they were supposed to be there for and just saying, that's not really going to work out for me. You need to set clear boundaries, but you do need to allow them to be able to say, look, I need a little bit of time off because I'm burning out. And another bad thing that we do is that we don't necessarily treat our volunteers with duty of care oftentimes the same way we do with our employees. I have heard employees say, look, it's not my job to diary manage my millennial volunteers. If they want to be part of every club, it's not, it's not really my responsibility, except it is. Um, if they are struggling or they're not responding to their emails or they're not coming to shift and they keep copping out, it might be time just to pull them aside and just say, look, do you need to, you know, do you need to step back on your duties for a little while and come back to us when you're ready to give your all? So this is when we move into utilizing, not using our millennial volunteers. And there's some really great points that we've already talked about. Highlighting our talents. And this goes across every generation of volunteers. Because sometimes we forget as employees that each and every one of our volunteers has a skill set and a career outside of the volunteering that we do. And we don't actually do a good enough job in many organizations of actually asking our volunteers what their, who their contacts are, what their talents are and whether or not they're actually willing to use those talents aside just folding envelopes they might actually have something that they really want to give back to your organization and they're willing to do for free if you just ask them and that's why in the millennials many of these people many of these people don't have careers yet or they're building their way towards their career so especially within small organizations allow your millennials to grow their skills within your organization now i spent many years hitchhiking across Canada as a backpacker and between my major career uh, professional life I used to actually do free PR work for community centers all across Canada and I've done a bit of it in Australia you know what it's a really great way to flush out your resume and your portfolio and it is really great help to a small organization that can't actually afford to bring a marketing professional an IT professional or other the other the skilled professionals on board especially if someone's studying so that's a really great way to utilize them. But don't give them work that somebody's getting paid to do. Now this is base ethics, we all, we all really know that, but it is important to say that. Millennials will not put up with that. Because many of them are striving towards their career, if they see somebody else is actually getting paid to do the work that they're currently being asked to do, they're not really gonna sit around uh, for it. Listen to their ideas. Um, if you want to move your organization into the digital future and you don't know how to set up a YouTube account, the 21-year-old that's answering the phone can probably do it for you. Uh, and this is where it's a good opportunity to sort of put your bravado and your ego aside because I've had to do it too because I did not understand Snapchat. What even is that? Um, just say, look, be patient with me. I don't really, I don't know how to do this, but this is, this is something that we really need to set up. Can you help me set up a YouTube channel? Can you tell me how we can be better attracting people on Instagram, hashtagging things? They're actually really good at helping with this. And the reality is, is that if you get your millennials to organize your organization in the digital sphere, they'll actually attract their peers that way because you're seeing it through their eyes. Um, now the other thing that we need to do to recruit volunteers is we need to create FOMO. Does anyone know what FOMO is? Okay. This is the fear of missing out, and this is a huge problem for millennials. Um, and it's actually a really, really important thing to harness when you're attracting millennial volunteers, is that 
We live in a very fast-paced digital world now where people share their experiences and then people feel like they're missing out on experiences. So show your millennial volunteers what they're missing out by not volunteering with your organization. And this is why that story on the rock is really important, is that many of us had the privilege of growing up in generations or with parents where volunteering was a fundamental part of who we are. And without getting wet-eyed, we've all had that experience as a volunteer. Somebody said something to us, something happened, somebody wrote a thank you letter to you, and it just, you know, swelled your Grinch heart two sizes bigger, and you were hooked. But a lot of millennials haven't had that experience, or haven't, especially growing up maybe with Gen X parents, that they didn't actually have that experience, and they don't necessarily know that that is something that exists out there in the world of volunteering. And please do it on social media, for the love of God. Um, we do, we, I mean, we don't need to build apps, I agree with you, but we need to start getting into the digital space because that's where millennials are. Um, creating value add experiences, and that is by telling them, yes, really, tell your millennial volunteers what they're gonna get out of volunteering. Tell them how being out on the ground with an organization helping the beneficiaries is going to fundamentally change the trajectory of their lives because that feeling that we've all had as volunteers, as I said, a lot of them don't haven't experienced that yet. So we need to start retelling that. And that is why you need to know what your product is and sell it the same way that we do in fundraising. Talk to your volunteers about what it is like to be a volunteer and then package that up and put it back out in the world as some kind of a marketing plan. Fancy it up. I know that I'm sort of, I do talk about volunteering a similar way to donor retention, but it is actually very similar principles. Um, and so that's when we talk about retention, not water retention, but volunteer retention. <laughs> Treat your volunteers like you treat your donors. Now, I don't know if there's anybody who has worked in the areas of donor and fundraising in here, um, but there are some very key principles to donor acquisition and retention that really can be applied to volunteers, which is that we need to show them the value of their time. Uh, this is something that Orange Sky Laundry actually does really well. Um, every month I put together a newsletter for the Sunshine Coast volunteers and I quantify how many kilos or tons of laundry we've done this month, how many important hours of conversation that we have fostered, and we retell the stories of you know, people who got job interviews, um, people who have made small steps in their lives, um, and we remind the volunteers how important it is that 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 kind of award system is really important to millennials because we're just we're exactly showing them what they're doing. And the other thing that we do really well at Orange Sky Laundry, and I've seen done really well at other organizations, is creating a community among your volunteers. Many of your volunteers won't actually have the opportunity to meet each other because they're on alternating shifts. So there's a lot of really creative ways that you can help them share their collective experience within your organization. Uh, one of them is to create a closed Facebook group. If you've got privacy sensitivities with your beneficiaries, you can actually create a closed Facebook group where volunteers can share their pictures. Another really great idea is to have an anonymous diary or journal that when your volunteers check out, sign out for the day, they can write little stories about what they've been through and encourage your other volunteers. That's that whole sharing of experiences and it kind of keeps you going. Because I'm sure if any of us work on the ground floor, we've all been sworn at or we've had tough days and you just need somebody to pat you on the back and remind you why you're there. Check in, check in, check in. Millennial volunteers go, hey, you just think, oh, they go off. We haven't heard from them in weeks at a time. That's why a check-in system is really good. Um, I like to try and call all my team leader volunteers at least once a month and actually have a good conversation with them on the phone. I like to send out monthly newsletters. I like to check in with them on Facebook. And then I also like to find out how they prefer to be checked in with, and then I put those little notes uh, next to their name. Um, and once again, for the love of God, say thank you. Um, find creative ways to say thank you to them or just constantly say thank you. Say thank you in emails, say thank you in phone calls. Show up on shift and say thank you to them. And then the hardest one of all is learn to let them go. I'm really, I'm not going to sing that song from that Disney movie, but 
it is important to learn to let them go um, because they are short-term volunteers. And this is where this gets really exciting as an industry, is that once you're inside the sphere of philanthropy, of being a donor or being a volunteer, you're not getting out. So if each and every one of us create really great value-added experiences for our volunteers, even though they may leave your organization, they're gonna go into another organization because they know what it's like to be a volunteer and how it changes their lives. So we can all actually support each other within the industry by fostering good volunteer relationships and knowing that in the karmic world of philanthropy, if we send somebody out into the world, somebody's gonna get sent back to us. And that's why the final most important thing that we can do is that we let our volunteers tell our story. We've got great big marketing plans for how we want our organization to be perceived in the world. Stop scripting your volunteers. They're the ones, more than your beneficiaries sometimes, they see exactly what it is that your organization is doing and how important it is. So what you need to do is you need to start seeing your organization through the eyes of your young volunteers. And the great way to start doing that, something that you can take away, is at your next volunteer get-together or your next meeting, ask all of your volunteers to bring a photo, either an actual photo from volunteering or just a photo that represents something important to them, and ask them to share with the group why that photo represents why they continue to volunteer with your organization, and then sell that story, put that story back out into the world, because this, this is one of my favorite photos for Orange Sky Laundry, and this is one that I constantly use when I'm reminding people why we have so much fun. It's, most of these people are volunteers and not our beneficiaries, um, and that's the kind of experience that they walk away with. Mm -hmm. yes, that's millennials. Yeah.